Now, as programmers, we want to write code in our normal IDE. We want to use source control and we want to automate how we update and test that code. Writing code in the web browser for this kind of thing on a large project with multiple people is not going to work, even if it's a really small microservice. We're going to copy this code into our local project here, which for now just has an index.js, a package.json and some other files we'll create as well. This is our code. So we're gonna check in the source control and every change, we're gonna have an audit history. If we break something, we can roll back. We can have tag builds, all the good stuff. So how do we get this code to the Lambda code area? How does that work? Well, you'll notice for this code entry type that it has the ability to either upload a zip file or you can get it from an Amazon S3 bucket. But there's another way you can do it as well. And that is using the shell update function. What this does is provide a way to, in one line of code, update the code that's on the server by the function name, and you can give it one of those options before to actually get the code. We're just gonna upload a zip file locally, and write some code locally, upload it, and then we're gonna create a command on that. So every time we save and we wanna test our code locally, we can upload it and see it. Add some debugging to it. Let's log out the event so we can see what the event is. And we put a comma, it'll sometimes format better in CloudWatch for us. But how do we get this code up there? We gotta run that shell command. A shell file called update sh can create bat files or other shell commands if you're on newer versions of Windows to do the same thing. And the reason we're doing this in shell is just that it's really quick and easy to do. We're gonna show you how to make everything JavaScript later, infrastructure as code, but this is a nice way to ease into it. And if you're in a hurry, this is a great way to treat infrastructure as a pet. Constantly upload it, know that it's always running. Unlike a server, it's always there. So you don't have to worry about is the server running? You just know your code's uploaded to the server, ready to go. First thing we gotta do is create a zip file. So we're gonna do zip rx in the zip file name we wanna create, which is index zip. That's where all our code is gonna go. We don't have any libraries right now, so we're just gonna add our one file, and that is our index.js. Wanna test out that script, we can say sh update sh, and you'll see that it wrote something. We can go there and see that we now have an index zip. So that's our code in the zip file. The next thing we need to do is upload this code. So we're gonna say AWS Lambda update function code. It's gonna take the code up there and replace it with what's in our zip file. My function man. And the name of the zip file is this weird file binary protocol thing, index zip. So that's your file name. This thing is just what they want, both in Python and JavaScript and shell all require that. And that's it. So we'll run that and you'll see that it uploaded and got a JSON response. We'll go in there and you don't see the code. So we'll reload and now you can see our log and our log events up there. The challenge though, is that you still can't really easily test locally. You have to click test and then see your response here. So we're gonna add one more shell command called invoke. And what this will do is invoke our function. We can actually test it and see the response from it. Very similar to how we see the response here. And unlike a rest command, we're actually just invoking the function. We're not interested in the triggers. We are strictly interested, did the code we upload work? Take all the S3 and API gateways out of it. And from this, we'll do AWS Lambda invoke. And this is gonna get kind of gnarly with a bunch of parameters. So we're gonna use the slash to do multi-line for shell. My function, man. The payload is gonna look nasty <laughs> doing JSON and shell. So let's do the basic echo and the invocation type. Invocation type is request. Response, that means we are waiting for the response. Call the function, wait, and get a response from it and be able to read what it sends back. The region is US East 1, obviously, for me, to be different for you. Log type is tail, so we're gonna puke out the log into an actual text file. And this is so if you wanna review it later. And we'll just, for now, we'll just cat it out. We're not gonna read anything with it. This is kind of throwaway. So we say sh invoke, we can see that it got the base64 result encoded and it's decoded in the text file for us. So we just cat or show it out. And you'll see the status code is 200, the body is result true, data of hello from Lambda. So our Lambda function is working as it would for a REST API. This is the normal JSON data that it would shove to the API gateway and send it back to the, the client. In our case, we're reading the raw response from the Lambda by invoking it. The last step is to take this into our package JSON and we'll say the update We'll call the update script, the invoke, we'll call the invoke script. Go back to our code and get rid of this log event for now. Then we can say npm run update. It'll update our new code. And then we can say npm run invoke. 
and it'll invoke our Lambda function to verify the code we upload still returns the response we were expecting. That is how you create code locally on a normal place in source control, update it on the server by calling the AWS CLI update function and just passing in your code as a zip file and the function name that you want to update. And then you can invoke your function locally without having to actually go to the Amazon console CLI and click a button. And then you can wrap those scripts inside your NPM to keep everything in node-ish land.